Good. Okay. This is the Fellowship of the Link call for Wednesday, August 9th, 2023. And we were just talking about Cory Doctorow, how much of fanboys we are. Yes, um, and that, that showed up partly because we were talking about uh, a question I raised. Hey, Michael, yay. Um, a question that I raised in a call just before this was uh, because we had started talking about the number of climate refugees there are going to be. I think it's, I think it's easily predictable that large numbers of people are going to be displaced by climate disasters in the next couple decades. So my question was, is there any way we can jujitsu this problem <laughs> into some benefit by treating refugees as first class global citizens? And doing something as good as possible for them, uh, because being a refugee really sucks. Uh, it's a it's a it's a bad sentence these days. Mostly, you can't work because you don't have citizenship, uh, or you're not permitted to work. I don't know exactly what what the numbers are. I'd love to know the numbers. It depends, yeah. But also, yeah. apparently, the average stay in a refugee camp is like 17 years now, which may be a, a bimodal uh, stretch because there's a bunch of people who've grown up in refugee camps, and their numbers would skew the whole thing. I don't know, but but that would be interesting to to learn about as well. Anyway, right. that took us over to Corey, who's got such imaginative writings about what the world might look like. Uh, yes. and that, that's kind of where we are. Yeah, and on the global citizenship, you know, and you mentioned also Jerry, like things like um, internet connection, internet services. You know, like of course, compute, uh, computing as a right, right, uh, uh, um, and access to the internet as a right. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really like that. Of course, you know, like. It is something that you know. It's in the realm of technical solutions, which of course have the allure and lure, you know, in the sense of like you know they they can lead to solutionism and so on. Uh, but I think in, in this case, I, you know, I, I sort of believe that internet access is different because it actually co it connects people and they can connect, uh, you know, arbitrarily, mm -hmm. uh, which is a bit of the internet and, and with their own solutions. But in any case, I really like this approach, which is like you know planning first on this for like this big problems, you know, this, uh, you know, big solution thinking uh, in the sense of like, you know, just establishing a framework where you say like, well, we can run the numbers as long as we can, you know, have a, a first draft of like what we need. We can run the numbers, find that we don't have the funds, but we know, you know, like that actually, I think, helps drive the narrative saying like if we have this much money, mm -hmm. in, even in this capitalist system with all these drawbacks, then we could provision these services. Mm -hmm. Uh, so and that really I think uh, pushes the ball to the other side of the court to some extent. Uh, you know, to, to to the question of like why not? Mm -hmm. Why why not raise this money? Maybe. It's cool, Pete. Thanks for the link to the article. Huh. Interesting. It's a battle of averages, as so many things are. <laughs> it reminds me of the book uh, The Death of Average, which I really liked. Uh, I'll put a link to it. Um, Oops, I don't think it's called the death of average. Um, the end of average, sorry. It's not the death of, it's just the end of. And the end of average was really enlightening in a couple of different ways. Um, let me get back to our chat. Here we go. Uh, because uh, it starts with a um, semi-famous Air, U.S. Air Force study where uh, when they get the first jet planes in Korea, you know, Korean War era, they get jet planes, they get better and faster. And all of a sudden, the uh, number of deaths from te test pilots goes way up. And uh, they're like, what's going on here? Are pilots just getting worse or what's going on? And then it turns out that um, they start measuring pilots and they measure some 3,000 pilots. They measure arm length, uh, distance between eyes, all sorts of physical measurements. And it turns out that only like 5% of all pilots are average, they fall into some average uh, setting. Everybody is off in some kind of way. And so they invent the adjustable seat. They invent like what turns into bucket seats in cars. That's how it makes its way down to, to like muggles. <laughs> um, but they invent the, the adaptable jet fighter seat, and all of a sudden, the pilot can see all the controls, can see the, over the dash, can reach the controls, and accident rates go back down, and who knows what else happens. But that's his, that's his opening salvo. But then he talks a lot about averages, and my, my favorite uh, pet peeve about averages is the notion everybody has that uh, a long time ago, lifespans were very short. 
that people did not live a long lifespan. And it turns out you could, if you made it past a certain age, because childhood diseases and lack of hygiene were rampant. So if you made it past a certain age, you were probably going to live as old as we live these days ish. Um, mm -hmm. You might lose your teeth and stop being able to eat food. Um, but you, your chances were good. It's just that, our, you know, the infant mortality really skews that, that perception. Anyway, end of end of long rant about yeah. averages. And you're probably less likely to get cancer. Yes. Uh, but uh, although they didn't have uh, SPF back then, so, and they were out, outdoors a lot, so you don't, you don't know. But okay. okay. the sense to stay under trees and yeah. wear hats and stuff like that. Well, and cancer. Uh, when did we start figuring out what a cancer even was? How did cancer get ID'd, right? Um, and, and what did we qualify it as before? Was it just tumors? Probably, mm -hmm. probably true. Like, it would be really or interesting. Bad to, tumors. Yeah. In the history of medicine, it'd be really interesting to see how we started like waking up to the fact that cells, once we, I guess we had to have cell theory first, but then some cells can start growing out of control and that is a cancer. Uh, mm -hmm. Huh. Pretty late probably. Yes. Yeah. Um, there are some like very old uh, suttas, Buddhist suttas, which deal with people who are sick. Hmm. And they, you know, like sometimes they describe the symptoms and they are terrible and they deal with, you know, how people cope with it. So it's, I mean, it's terrible, right? But imagine like coping with like this, like, say, say uh, uh, metastatic cancer mm -hmm. without way before, of course, knowing what cancer is or how to deal with it. Uh, yes, uh, pretty uh, <laughs> terrible stuff. Uh, also very interesting to read it. You know, like uh, maybe you know, through thousands of years, imagine like sometimes a, a diagnosis. Um, uh, yes, and just how people have to cope with it. Yes. So yet another reason to be happy that we are in this age. Yeah, uh, exactly, yes. exactly. Yes, despite all Probably the so. all the many reasons to not be so happy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what is on anybody's mind that is uh, fellowship-ish? So I. Uh, fixed a bit the hour of the link uh, in people. Yeah, so it's a bit uh, in a better shape. Uh, still like um, not super uh, well, uh, populated with the with bootstrap, but like uh, if you can already uh, take a look if you want, uh, I mean, at your own uh, pace, but you know, essentially it's seeded. Uh, this is the index. Uh, like just like you know, if you um, if you want upload an index to any of the repositories, it will show up in the index. It's just the the algo in a nutshell, and um, you know, it's it actually it's now the algorithm link everywhere. I have I made some code changes, so now it's generic. Uh, so the overall um, structure of the algorithm is the same as any algorithm. Whenever you search for something, which is like using a location. Uh, you can just click through to like uh, this is just like a convenience. You know, if you don't find anything in the hour, you can click through to your uh, settings of the choice. Cool. You can get like a uh, Wikipedia uh, uh, just in line, and then like everything that sounds like what you search. Some context. These are like the connections to and from these, and uh, then uh, just like a full text search in case you want to, for example, like the OGM meeting index is here um you also have like uh, you can just um essentially that one is recursive so you, for example like the meeting index from the ogm gets surfaced in the index and you can just like uh visit that location by uh clicking through and uh this is uh everything we have and most of it is my garden which i added because it's like i'm in the fellowship but they also have the OGM uh, and MassiWiki, uh, I think default um, uh, repositories. And uh, it, I think it has, yeah, 7,000 uh, nodes, which is you know, okay to start with. And this is already hanging my browser here, but uh, maybe your ah. computer will be faster. This is like this hairy wall. Mm -hmm. uh, and here you can find any contact points. A lot of these are, um, are from my own garden. But essentially, if we like write about the same uh, problems, like for example, like a uh, soil poverty, just to take an index, uh, here you see how many different resources that are named like this are in this hour, yeah. essentially. So you can just uh, play with that. 
And one of my, if you want to uh, to explore, uh, and you know, just like uh, hop around. Uh, so first, like, don't come to this page because it crashes because it's too large. <laughs> but like, uh, you can just uh, um, go to this is the wrong one. Uh, if you visit the Agora, just click on random. This is one of my favorite things, and this is just like a nice way to like just jump to a random location. Oh, cool. And I found it is super simple, but like one of my favorite features. And this experience essentially like this is the level of uh, you know visualization that we have now. So for example, like this is where we are. This is what is linking here, and this is uh, what is being linked here. Inbound and outbound so, links. Right, exactly. Yep. Uh, so you know, so for example, like car popper. Somehow I don't have a node on car popper. What? But you know, yeah, I know. It's like what? What? What do I do with my time? Uh, uh, but um, uh, you can read about popper here, and of course, like if you want, just go directly to um, to the stoa and take a note. Essentially, so you can. The idea is like, so you do know, you, you auto pop? Do you auto generate a URL for uh, the hedge doc, or what are you doing there? Yeah, yeah. So this is like just like the easiest way. Of, uh, essentially, uh, the stoas right now are services like even like you know you can say like car popper, and then you are in this location where you have at least some tools to coordinate. Like you can, you can have like a like a video conference. If this works, uh, just here, and at the same time just start working on a document huh. uh, uh, on car popper. So here I will say probably like uh, what I have said. But I'm guessing that I call car popper popper, just uh, endearingly. Is that true? <laughs> okay, so something uh, got to got there, but nothing uh, very useful. <laughs> yeah. So in any case, uh, unfortunately, for now, as you click random, you will mostly get my brain. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh, I mean, I say unfortunately because you know not very diverse, uh, uh, but um, with time, you know, if we add more things, I think it's gonna be. Uh, I'm also happy to like down rank or like just, you know, uh, if we have more repositories, I think it will become more representative of the fellowship, and I would love uh, to like uh, you know advance that process, uh, and of course uh, your, uh, uh, I mean your brains, I mean, as in. The people in this call are very welcome. <laughs> Thank you um, very yeah. much. Um, Pete, I'm thinking here of the enhanced calls project. And like it seems like there's might be some overlaps and some connections here. Yep. So what is that? <laughs> uh, so it was uh, Pete's uh, desire to keep moving on how do we take like we're, we're all in too many zoom calls how do we take the outputs of a zoom call from the chat to the video to other sorts of things slice and dice them to make them more valuable afterward um and i'm paraphrasing badly pete you will correct me i hope yeah that, that's a good explanation i it's not quite a real project or it's there are an, a, a few sub projects that i've got going um some automation to download Zoom artifacts and put them in the right place. Um, uh, yeah. Vincent uh, with Catalyst has got something similar too. He's he's got a reasonable amount of sophistication about uh, keeping track of uh, artifacts. Mm -hmm. I we should actually um, we should fold Vincent into, or at least have an outreach to Vincent from Fellowship of the Link. That'd be great. Because he's doing a lot of the same stuff. Cool. So can we um, invite him? I'm just curious what what he. I mean, this seems like trove, the trove piece. Um, has that has that um, gone somewhere beyond? I haven't I haven't been on Catalyst lately, and I don't know if the sort of ability to save individual items and relate them to each other has expanded in scope? I mean, or is that um, not what you're You, you probably about? know about as much as I do, but I, but he does, he does have, you know, an individual object for a lot of stuff um, and then a hierarchy of, of objects. So he's got, 
individual chat messages and then those roll up into a chat and you can also do a query to say all the messages by pete or all the messages by pete in ogm calls or you know whatever mm. um so he's got a lot of that in database form you know the 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 atoms he's got in database in in the database and then um some some you would search or browse to and some actually get uh like a uh an event page will have you know chat artifacts and video video recordings and also the ability to index into the chat per message that kind of stuff cool mm -hmm. um michael the book you just put in the chat is an invented title or is that actually a book oh it's an invented title i like it i like it <laughs> <laughs> could you just ask chat to, 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 to a book could you but, just ask, uh, ask gpt to write it? write it yeah yeah from humors to tumors i like it <laughs> it's it's real it's what we used to call at the national lampoon a pun trap it's like you know people would say something like the great fat speed oh, and and there you are and somebody that that's an example of why i remember that one because somebody actually wrote it and you know i had to have it illustrated um botero style um and uh but you know there, there were certain stories that were best left a pun in the the weekly meeting and not you know played out so humors to tumors is kind of it's a little bit maybe like john cage's four minutes 33 seconds or something like that although i don't know i think the experience of sitting through it probably would quite be quite something um but uh, do you all know what that was yeah yeah uh, so Flancian, uh, Cage was an experimental composer and musician, and he basically yeah, composed a piece where the pianist goes out, sits down, opens up... Oh, 422 or something, yeah. yeah. Opens up the, yeah. the piano, sits there mm -hmm. for four minutes and 32 seconds, and then closes the piano and walks away. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sorry, I miss her, yes. I, I know. Con yeah. Conceptual art, yeah. Yeah. And so much conceptual art is, like, nice as a concept, and it's like, why did you play this out? Yeah, that's a category of so the one that you know only works once essentially. <laughs> Somehow. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it, they got a lot of repeat performances. Right, right. I think I've seen some actually, uh, but they they tend to feel more like a commemoration of the original one to some extent, no? Mm. You know, but uh, it's like putting like a urinal in a museum. It just doesn't have the same. Uh, <laughs> impact anymore well it doesn't anymore because we've sort of broken those barriers but like it you know exactly when it yeah it was necessary when, when these it's barriers get broken it shatters everybody everybody's like no this is horrible it's not art it can't be you know yeah. uh, all these different funny things yeah yeah and then we get used to it completely uh, on the topic of this um, artifact downloader and so on uh, i'm interested in that category of devices um i tend to call them siphons for lack of a better word, because they're not. Side phone? Uh, sorry, a siphon. Siphon. Oh, siphon. Siphons. Yeah, sorry. My accent. Uh, just because uh, I guess, well, I don't know. I don't know if there were bridges I usually reserve for like cross to, for two side, uh, two way, right? Like connection, like uh, bridging between networks. And siphons are more like one way to some extent. And I guess I, I use that because like uh, I like the idea of like, you know, a siphon very often has like an initial setup cost and then information flows. Uh, and those are the best shape, right? As in when you don't need to take repeat action. So, uh, uh, so I guess I'm interested in, that, in, in essentially uh, that class of thing. I also remember uh, there's a few projects in that space. I know of Dogship. I don't know if you hear about that. Um, I think it's by Simon Willison, like the same as the data set and a bunch of interesting tools. And just a, a, a few more of these that are just like more like frameworks for getting information from different platforms out into some user controlled location. Never heard of dog sheep. Very interesting, and it's used for personal analytics. It says, "Yeah, 
<laughs> well, um, is it I also remember outside of GitHub, or is there? Uh, uh, so, could you repeat, uh, Michael? Does it exist outside of GitHub? I, that's the only thing I surfaced. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's actually a a collection of like um, tools for you know like uh, for data set. So yeah, that, that GitHub pages is the is the actual um, page. Yes, uh, GitHub it's, it's basically import import and export tools that help you gather your data. It's cool. Yes, um, and Simon Willison actually is, has a lot of uh, great work uh, in this uh, in this space. Huh. And also in uh, now uh, with Lagman like models, I know he has a Python library that makes it uh, quite easy to interact with different models, and he's just very prolific. Um, yeah. So, so in general, it seems like the, the pattern will be like tools that let users break out of wall gardens. Uh, maybe. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like a, a, Google has a data liberation front. I don't know right. if they still, still have it, but I thought that was pretty cute back in the day. Sorry, Michael. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I just I didn't uh, hear the last thing that Fonsian said. Um, oh, I, no, I guess it, these iPhones, I, I think of uh, as in the of, of, of this pattern. Yeah, the pattern siphon that helps users break out of a uh, wall gardens. Oh, wall well, gardens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So maybe bridge be becomes a better word there because I guess, I guess if you have a wall garden, you either tunnel under the wall or bridge uh, above it. <laughs> so mixed metaphors, maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe it should be called uh, Rapunzel. Right. Escape yeah, vehicle yeah, yeah. or something like that. Wow. All, all are welcome. <laughs> thank, thank you, Pete and ChatGPT. By the way, I'm just glancing at. The I think all we need to do now is a great let's answer. Let's spit this out as an EPUB and go. Our NeoBook mm -hmm. question is solved. I have a, a few links to share and also kind of a, a, a question that would be good for this group. Cool. Nice. Um, I, I'm going to copy and paste from some massive wiki notes Bill and I had earlier today. It's not really worth linking to a bigger thing. but So this is going to be kind of a mess, but whatever. Um, uh, Stowe is... Uh, I don't know if we, I, I know Stowe pretty well. You, you probably do too, Jerry. Yep. Um, maybe you, I Michael. Sub I subscribe to this to his newsletter, but I don't write, read it often. Um, uh, this is uh, this is a recommendation from Bill, actually. Um, um, but it looks like a really interesting piece. Mm -hmm. um, Bill uh, Stowe has gotten deep into Obsidian. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he kind of did a survey of all the similar tools, and he doubled down and tripled down and quadrupled down on Obsidian. And he's really pushing. Um, so it's an interesting thing about annotation. Um, the ink and switch thing is interesting. It's not new or anything like that, but uh, ink and switch is an independent research lab, they call it. Um, probably like us, maybe a little bit more organized, maybe not. Um, anyway, they wrote a really cool collaborative editor that combines the idea of collaborative editing and, and version control. Um, uh, there's a demo. They say not to really rely on the demo. It's not very useful. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds useful to me, but whatever. Which of their projects um, is the the project? Which of Incan switches? Uh, upwelling, upwelling, upwelling. Okay. Um. Uh, I think this is a Nature article about um, sci uh, you know, research scientists using GitHub to. Uh, um, anyway, we were kind of, and then. Um, uh, I think that's Mikey. Um, the Mastodon link about constantly in re re reinventing Git like concepts under different names. <laughs> so last week it, it was that Bill and I were commiserating about Git. And so here's the question. Um, I, I was like, you know, Git is amazing and a wonderful tool and I love it dearly. Um, and it's an important part of my life and it's important for you know the world and all that. Git wow. is awesome. However, it's a pain in the rear for Massive Wiki. It is just mostly a, a an obstacle. 
<laughs> which is really terrible because you know the the thing that it does the thing that it promises to do and does like 85 percent of the time is amazing it's amazing and wonderful but you know the 15 percent of the time that it breaks means that nobody can use massive wiki except me and bill and a few <laughs> more people. so um uh literally by the way that it's gotten to the point where i'm i've got a three-person collaboration um we've, we've got a little startup um and and each of us i i trained both of the other people on how to use obsidian how to use obsidian with git how to use massive wiki they're they're pretty good at it but they're not programmers they're not devs and so in the course of trying to get work done after like the fourth time the thing fell over when we're trying to get work done it was like okay everybody sign up for obsidian git or, sorry not obsidian git everybody sign up for obsidian sync uh, and let's just work <laughs> and now we're all happy you know um it's terrible so, so wait so I, it was massive wiki itself that got left out of the process in the, um or so I just want to make sure I follow your stuff. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Thank you, Michael. Um, uh, I was getting ranty. Um, not that I'll stop being ranty, but um, so th there's an observation that Bill and I have been coming to for the past couple of weeks with with Massive Wiki. Um, one of them is the the part of Massive Wiki that you kind of see if you step into our world is Massive Wiki Builder, um, which I think we're either going to rename it or have renamed it. I, I forget which one. Um, we're renaming that to be Massive Wiki Publisher. Um, we had Starter Wiki, Massive Wiki Starter um, Wiki, and we realized it's only a starter for the publishing thing. So there's this whole use case of Massive Wiki, which is just, you know, I can use Git, I can use Obsidian or, or Emacs or VS Code with a few friends, and I'm, I'm doing Massive Wiki, right? Massive Wiki, and so we kind of realized that um, uh, hang on just a sec, I need to answer somebody who's at the, the Goshi for me. Um, uh, we kind of realized that there's we, we've, we're teasing apart there's there's using Massive Wiki like it's a wiki and and um, you don't have to do any publishing with that. Then there's using Massive Wiki. It's very convenient actually to use Massive Wiki as a publishing tool, a static site builder that gives you a nice website um, that then is not interactive, kind of by design. So Massive Wiki publishing is not an integral part of Massive Wiki, even though we made it feel like that to most people who've bumped into us over the past couple of years. Um, so to answer your question a little bit, Michael a private collaboration group can be using massive wiki really effectively and never publish and that's what we're doing um can use it really effectively modulo the falling over tripping over git every once in a while um i'm going to take a break and put this on me no ritz crackers wheat thins <laughs> what i'm uh, just saying he's 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 apparently got somebody fetching an order from the grocery, and I think they just called. Oh, That's yeah. Probably. Oh, the, oh, the whole product. Sorry, yeah, I think they yeah, yeah. Um, It's interesting. Uh, so while we wait for, for a bit, because I, uh, I'm interested in his question, um, what is your experience with Git? I guess it's like, a, I just do. Git is just too, ar too arcane to use. Like, um, you know, in Obsidian, um, I can, I, I've, Pete coached me through, excuse me, using Obsidian to push files using uh, the Git plugin for Obsidian to GitHub. OK, okay good. Git, yeah. But then there's another way you can do it, which has a more complicated display that shows you all of the staged files, and you can push from there. I look at that display, and I am lost. I am just a lost puppy. Um, and so I, I think the problem is that it's just a wee bit complicated for people who aren't naturally thinking about that. Sorry, right. Pete, you're back. I'm back. It is actually Joanne, my dear wife. Um, is so it's not just a random oh, okay it I'm wasn't a, a, Instacart. a rabbit um uh, shipped is the one we're using um so 
long story short, I we're, we think we're going to get better at, at presenting massive wiki as a wiki um, and figuring out the sociology of wikis. That's a whole an, another whole can of worms. It's actually a really it's it's hard to use wiki as well, um, or it's not obvious to use wiki as well. It's it's easy once you're in wiki nature and thinking wiki. It's it's hard to get to that state. Um, so my question is, Git is just this pain. Um, and, and last week, I'm like, you know, we don't need all the fancy stuff of Git. I don't even really need it to do diffs. You know, I like last file, save wins, all the, you know, all the fancy things it does. I don't care too much. I care about versioning and I care about sharing. How about if we just write um, some simple demons that, that run on your box that do the right thing, that do the very minimal stuff that you need to do? So by the way, we've also gone through the sync thing. Sync thing is another amazing and wonderful tool, but it it's it's built for a different use case, which is making sure that you have the same files on different computers. We have a different use case, which is we want the same files on different computers, but we also want a version uh, version log of them. Um, so you know, to the the last post in my, in chat, my, the Mastodon post, it's like. You know, people do this over and over. It's like, well, I need my my information decentralized. Git isn't working for me. I'm going to write my own because it's better. <laughs> so half of me goes, that's a great idea. You know, the like the three or four things that it should do really well that's different from other needs, apparently. Um, does it, does it, is it crazy to think that we should follow that path a little bit? Should we just try to wrap Git into 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 submission or something like that? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a, my a provocative answer. And uh, provocative which, and which very succinct. Put to both, yes. <laughs> so yeah, I think uh, no, uh, no. I'm just being fastidious. Uh, I think uh, building something on top of Git that um, essentially out automatically manages the 15 percent of cases that are not working uh, seems to me like a better approach and probably more useful to the world beyond the initial impact of the, of the, the impact of the projects we developed that for um i know a lot of people have had developed like half has solutions for this kind of thing including myself and i'm about to link mine <laughs> um uh, so it just seems like it's you know it has like a bigger upside even yeah. if we the tools we develop that for fail, maybe that will be an utterly useful in itself. Um, also, it allows people uh, to still peek uh, behind the curtains uh, as they are grow that. So that to me, uh, and and this uh, of course leads me to the path of like that. This maybe exists, and maybe there are like a million projects called Easy Git, and they don't do what, they, what we need. I mean, I know another one likely, uh, but yes, that will be my default. If we after we exhaust that, then I will go into the direction of a different demon uh, or service. Just because I think you know, in practice, uh, there is um, just a lot of downside to like doing our own thing without having at least try to build on the tools we already have. Um, that's really smart. Thank you. I, I needed that. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's right, but and, uh, and I don't know if I'll follow the advice, but. <laughs> <laughs> I know I know exactly how you feel. Uh, this is like my really this is my 10 line hack, which works for me, TM. Uh, this is what I, it runs in a loop as a system D service, essentially, you know. Yeah. So the tool could be something akin to a system D service that runs this. Uh, the one thing that I uh, I believe this is lacking. Uh, yes, yes, yes. System D is like a you know uh, the init and uh, like a system. Uh, it's like a is the system that administers the demons, like you know system services in like uh, most Linuxes, uh, and you know uh, Mac has its own. Its own. Um, so I think if you just if you are fine discarding updates, yeah. uh, I think. Just base yeah. uh, Git commands are probably enough to essentially rebase and you know automate that process. I, I don't know, but my, my follow-up question is: What is actually in the fifteen fifteen percent? Um, I so I I have a, a similar um, 
uh, mine is actually a cron job. Um, uh, the, the thing that isn't part of my cron job is that poll rebase false. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, it took me a long time to kind of realize that, oh, you mean, <laughs> you know, because, and, and it, it actually took a while to even, I don't know, I, like, uh, I think I, I think the way it was set up or something like that, we had some people with, they had uh, rebase set to false. Some of them were set to true. I think I had a system where it was sometimes one and sometimes the other. Yeah, it can reason. be local or, or local. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. so, um, so it, it took a while to go, you know, <laughs> this would be a lot easier if we just, didn't have it rebase every, everything. Um, yes. Uh, I think this is something... so the, the other yeah. big component of it is um, a couple other big components. One of them is getting it installed um, yeah. uh, on an arbitrary system. Somebody has a yeah. Windows system, somebody has a Mac, somebody has a Linux box. You know, what do you yeah. tell them? Um, and and Mac is still the native, uh, the native Git is still in developer tools, you know, so it's like, don't worry, you're going to, you know, you're, you're going to sign, you know, have to agree, agree with Apple that you're, you know, blah, 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 whatever. It's like, you know, come on, guys, you know, Git is a beast to try to get installed on an yeah. arbitrary machine that uh, for a non-technical person. So that's True. one thing. Then the, the thing right after that is getting uh, authentication, right? Um, there's like four or five different kinds of authentication that might work and depending on who's so i've i've got a population of semi devs um uh so uh you know there's https there's git there's um uh you can use so part of the problem here also is I, problem is a weird word but you know you're authenticating to a service so github for instance github has kind of rotated through different authentication um, uh, methods and and preferences mm -hmm. for them right so depending on who got set up when you know they've got some old creaky personal access token that is about to fall over but hasn't yet so then you go in and tell them um oh you need to switch all your https yeah. things to git and then you know, you, yeah you, you we break shouldn't base this on all their you know <laughs> so so that's another part of it and and mm -hmm. we've we haven't automated anything but you know um uh i th i think we've got pretty good how to's now for installing git the the thing i would prefer is just to use uh there's a, a java a pure javascript git um clone which yeah is, yeah uh, isomorphic git yes yes yeah yeah, you know, uh, and, and use that. bundle it. And then I think the thing to do with authentication is something similar. You know, you just automate yeah. the authentication stuff. Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, I think uh, I, um, or, or just go with GT. Uh, and like, uh, you know, like I could totally say, say maybe something like the Massive Wiki community, uh, the Aguara community, and so on, could maybe run our own Git uh, servers or federation of, uh, you know, like a foundry. Yeah. Uh, and then iterate better with that. Maybe over GitHub, although they would really lose the network effects, and you know we have the conversation. But I would be super happy to like maybe uh, have a, like a brainstorming session just on that, honestly, because that's a good uh, idea. Yeah. Um, the, the, the thing that yeah. I, I hope to get to someday, um, I still yeah. hope to get to someday, is the GitHub style collaboration, um, mm -hmm. pull requests, yeah. and uh, you know fine grain commenting on changes yeah. and you know that kind of yeah. stuff that's amazing um but maybe that's a thing to do on our and maybe we should get outside of of uh, there's the uh, the network effects too but um maybe we should use one of the new uh new foundry you know um, yes uh, and honestly i mean actually uh, it's interesting uh, when i i interact with github i'm actually believe unless I'm doing something wrong, the, the tools for commenting the review flows and so on are very basic, actually. So I I, 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 I found, although they are good enough because they have comments and so on, but like, I really believe Giti or uh, the fork, whose name I forget, uh, maybe will actually leave for uh, GitHub. I, well, maybe I'm pushing for this. I, um, I, 
yeah, that's that's a good observation. Um, so Codeberg, I think, is the the fork you're thinking of. The Codeberg. Yeah, there's two forks. I think Codeberg. Yeah, you're right. Codeberg maintains one of the forks. Um, I don't know what it's called. Um, they they did a fork of a fork kind of. Um, oh, and, so they call it the uh, forjo. 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 Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, the, I I think I get what you mean. The 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 collaboration tools in GitHub are actually pretty simple. They're not. Yeah like mm -hmm. if you were doing you know the fancy annotation stuff that we'd want to do and you know it's it, you can't really do it mm -hmm. on the flip side i think what they've got is super usable um it's really easy to start using the github yeah. collaboration tools and to continue using them you don't have to do training you don't really have to understand what's going on you can kind of just fumble around through it like millions of of mm -hmm. developers have without reading any documentation They've smoothed off the the UI and the UX for it so that it just kind of works no matter who's using it. Um, so that's the that's the thing that I worry about missing out. Even though it would be nice to get it to be fancier and better, maybe. Yeah, yeah, that's and maybe fair. for Joe's. Uh, the other thing um, I feel like we uh, and I think we discussed this earlier, but just to, to like um, I guess bump it. Uh, that I feel could really benefit. I mean, I could be part of this uh, vertical package that we build either as a standalone daemon or as a complement to Git, like a, maybe a packaging of Git, uh, is um, automatic merge for wiki-like edits. Yeah. So that's not there. Uh, but if we develop the tool, like they can actually tackle the, you know, in my experience, majority of merge conflicts for like Agora nodes and so on, which are like, you know, wiki like, uh, that will go a long way. Essentially, uh, the, the question of like taking a conflict in Git terms, uh, text, text conflict, uh, and resolving it using the same rules you will use if you were um, in a, a resolving a conflict in a CRDT, right? Yeah. Or, so, I yeah. mean, or just resolving it in any way, honestly, <laughs> right? But better than our writing. Uh, the typical example is you add a block, I add a block, and suddenly we have a merge conflict, but it's not really a merge conflict. They yep. are two blocks. Yep. Any order is okay, right? Yep. So, uh, you know, hierarchy, uh, they are like, they, what, what logs, you know, the uh, uh, sort of that. Thing. So yep. I would be super happy to work on that, actually. Uh, yeah. Um, I would be too, except I don't have any time to do it. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> um, but maybe we should make a notional project for it, and 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 yes, and as as possible, kind of add. Yes. Well, I have a, a non well a non technical person's technical question, um, which is is really more of a philosoph philosophic um, question or. I don't know, paradigm question. Um, with, with, I've been talking a lot to people about, about paradigm, paradigms for information gathering and, and dealing with the whole notion that we live in push world where, you know, stuff is coming at us and it's not all stuff we want. And we, you know, all the, all the solutions seem to be about moderation and and you know at best filtering um the stuff that's being pushed at us um and then we're trying to push stuff outward to compete in the push world um but that what we really want is a pull world where um and and i don't know how this how this relates to what pull requests mean in Git world, um, mm -hmm. and it may be something completely different. Um, but the the notion that everything that we have and want, well, that we have in the way of information that is our digital selves that we don't want to share lives with us and stuff that we want to share we make available, but for somebody to get it from us, we're not pushing it at them. They have to pull it from us. 
Um, and likewise, if we want to bring information in, we are choosing among things that are accessible to us. And we may be setting up automated feeds that are essentially algorithms, um, but they're ours to set up saying, we want this information from this source um, that is accessible to us for free or for a payment um, delivered right. to us at this interval. Like I want this in the form of a weekly newsletter or I want it in the form of an RSS feed that comes immediately as soon as the thing is published, whatever it is, but it's, we are, we are in, in a non-technical, non-Git terminology, we are requesting that pull and specifying, mm -hmm. you know, our intention mm -hmm. to give it some of our attention rather than having okay. it demand our attention that all we can do is turn it off in a push world. Um, so my question, prefacing with all that, is does that paradigm relate at all to the Git notion of pull and pull request, or is it something completely different? You could, it, it maps kind of exactly. A, a pull request is an announcement to a listener 